Over the past month, the NYSE index is up by more than 6%, and over the past five days, it's up by more than 1%, or the equivalent of $164. Now, even though the NYSE is up by quite a bit over the past five or so days, there are three REITs, or real investment trusts, that have fallen in price by quite a bit. And these are the public storage, ticker PSA, Cube Smart, ticker Cube, and national storage affiliates, ticker NSA. Now, all these REITs have one thing in common, and that is that they focus on operating self-storage facilities all around the US and therefore today I want to figure out which of these three storage companies might be the best buy at this very nice discount price and to do this we'll jump over to my read stock analysis tool where we'll have a look at the nine pillar analysis the historical price to FFO multiples valuation dividend discount model which will all lead to our ultimate valuation at the end of the video the first read we will have a look at is public storage ticker PSA will plug in the ticker up here and all the metrics will show up automatically and as we can see right off the start the dividend yield is sitting at 4.13 percent and the dividend payout is 12 dollars per share per year now the payout ratio for PSA is quite high sitting at around 90 percent which would generally be quite bad but as PSA is a read they do not have to direct a large proportion of their FFO towards innovation allowing them to utilize it as dividend payments. Now for those of you who don't know, FFO or Funds from Operations is in simple terms the equivalent of free cash flow for REITs and therefore when evaluating REITs we use FFO instead of free cash flow. Next we can see that the analysts currently have a target price of $346 compared to the current price of $290.58. We can also see that the beta of PSA is very low sitting at about 0.44 which means that with PSA you won't see as much volatility as you would see with the overall market. Now we can jump to the 9 pillar analysis where I have already plugged in the ticker for public storage and right off the start we can see that the rating is 7 out of 9, a pretty solid rating. We can see that the revenue, FFO and net income have all been increasing very nicely over the past 5 years. There has been consecutive dividend growth over the past 5 or so years, sitting at about 25% annually, which is very good. And the long-term liabilities over the 5-year FFO is sitting at about 0.68, which is great, meaning that historically the company has enough FFO to pay for its long-term liabilities in about 3 or so years. Now in the middle here we can see that over the past few years there has not been a decrease in shares outstanding and the price to FFO is higher than 23 by about 0.5 but this doesn't really bother me that much as all the other metrics are very nice but now let's move to our first valuation model which is the historical price to FFO we will plug in the ticker PSA and as we can see all the metrics show up automatically giving us an intrinsic value of $308.85 now to get this intrinsic value, we take the historical price to FFO and compare it to the current price to FFO and find out by how much the stock is over or undervalued compared to its historical price to FFO. And as we can see, PSA is currently slightly undervalued compared to what it has been trading in the past. But now let's move to the next valuation model, which is the multiples valuation model. And here I compare PSA to NSA Cube and Extra Space Storage. I took these companies' current stock prices and divided by their FFOs per share to get their price to FFO. I then averaged out that price to FFO and multiplied by the price to FFO of PSA to get an intrinsic value of $215, sorry, $250.14. Quite a bit lower than the current trading price by about $40. But now let's move to our final valuation model, the dividend discount model. And right away we can see that over the past 5 or so years, PSA did not raise their dividends at all. And only in 2022 they had a large raise by about 15%. And therefore over the next few years I project a growth rate of about 2.5%. And that combined with the next year's dividend and the WAC will give us an intrinsic value of $308. But now let's move to our ultimate value where we average out the multiples valuation, historical price to FFO and dividend and discount valuation to get an intrinsic value of $289.14 and as we can see that is about 0.5% lower than the current trading price and if we want to plug in a margin of safety of say about 10% that would give us acceptable buy price at $260.23 now personally I would plug in a margin of safety of about only 5% as PSA is one of the biggest storage companies in the world and therefore I believe it should be trading at a slight premium. I myself am waiting for PSA to drop to about $280 and that's when I will buy some shares of this company. But now we can move to valuing national storage affiliates, ticker NSA. 
Now right away we can see that NSA has a starting dividend yield of 5.56% which is very good. Now one thing that really bothers me here is the payout ratio which is higher than 100% and is sitting at about 188%. Now as I said before REITs do not have to have a low payout ratio but a payout ratio of more than 100% basically means that the company is going into debt when paying for dividends. So that's a red flag right here. Now the institutional ownership is about 90% and the beta is sitting in 0.71 fairly close to PSA but slightly higher but it still means that you won't see as much volatility with NSA as you would with the overall market. Now we can also see that NSA is quite smaller than PSA with a market cap of only 5.5 billion dollars. Now we can move to the 9 pillar analysis where we will plug in NSA for the ticker symbol. And right away we can see that the current rating is 8 out of 9. Revenue, FFO and net cash flow have been increasing over the past 5 years, which is great. We can also see that there has been consecutive dividend growth over the past few years. And the long term liabilities of the 5 year FFO is sitting at 2.99, meaning that NSA could pay off their debt with their historical 5 year FFO. But now let's move to our first valuation model, which is the historical price to FFO model. And we can see we'll plug in the ticker NSA. And right away, all the historical data will show up, giving us an intrinsic value of $48.57, about $10 higher than the current trading price. Now, as I already explained how this model works, we will now move to the next valuation model, the multiples valuation model. And I will compare NSA to the same companies as they are all in the same sector, except I will re replace NSA with PSA. And as we can see, I will take these companies' stock prices, divide by FFOs, Take the average price to FFO, multiply by the price to FFO of NSA and get an intrinsic value of $82.83, a lot higher than the current trading price. But now we can move to the next valuation model, the dividend discount model. We'll plug in the ticker NSA. And as we can see, over the past 5 or so years, NSA has been raising their dividends steadily and very well. Therefore, I do believe that over the next few years, the dividend growth rate will be at about 3% annually. And if we plug that in, we can see the intrinsic value comes out to be $112.13. As the calculated intrinsic value is quite different to the current price of NSA, and I believe that is due to the projected growth rate being quite close to the WAC of the company, we will use an alternative model, which is projecting a much more realistic intrinsic value for NSA. Now we can jump to the ultimate valuation tab where we will change the dividend discount model to the alternative dividend discount model and plug in the ticker NSA. And as we can see, this would give us an intrinsic value of $58.55, about 50% higher than the current trading price. Now, based on my research into NSA and due to the high payout ratio, I would plug in a margin of safety of 25% which would give us an acceptable buy price at $43.91. Now, even though NSA is currently trading quite lower than what its intrinsic value is, as I have pointed out before, it has a very high payout ratio of almost 200%. And as we can see through the dividend discount model, even through all this, they still raised their dividends in 2022, which to me is slightly concerning. But now let's jump to the third read on our list, which is Cube Smart Ticker Cube. So we'll plug that in and right off the start we can see that the current dividend yield is 4.24%. Very nice. The dividend payout is 1.96 and again the payout ratio is above 100% but it is not as high as NSA's payout ratio. The analysts currently project the price of $52.43, about $7 higher than the current trading price and the beta of the company sitting at 0.55 which is the lowest beta out of the three companies we are evaluating today. Now to the right here we can see that Cube is a mid-sized company sitting in between NSA and PSA with a market cap of $10.2 billion. Now we can jump to the 9 pillar analysis where I have already plugged in the ticker and right off the start we can see that the current rating is 7 out of 9. We can see that revenue, FFO and net income have all been increasing over the past 5 years and the 5 year profit margin is almost 70%. The long term liabilities of the 5 year FFO is below 3 sitting at 1.72 and there has been consecutive dividend growth over the past 5 years sitting at about 12.3% annually. Now the price to FFO over the past 5 years of Cube is quite high but it's not anything that would change my perspective on the companies dramatically. Now we can jump to the first valuation model, the historical price to FFO model. We'll plug in the ticker cube and as we can see on average the current price to FFO of cube is quite higher than it has been over the past few years. Therefore the intrinsic value is quite lower than the current trading price sitting at about $38. 
but let's jump to the next validation model where we will compare cube to PSA, NSA and extra. I will just plug in NSA in and as we can see compared to these three companies the intrinsic value of cube comes out to be $37.81. Quite lower than the current trading price by about $8. Now we can jump to the final valuation model, the dividend discount model. We'll plug in the ticker cube. Now as we can see the program plugs in the dividend payout over the past 5 years and calculates the average growth rate to be at about 10.15%. Now due to my research and as I like to be quite conservative, I would give this company a projected growth rate of about 2.8% into the future. And this would give us an intrinsic value of $62.95, about $14 higher than the current trading price. Now we can jump to the ultimate valuation where we will switch the alternative dividend valuation model to the dividend valuation model. We'll plug in the ticker cube and right away we can see that the intrinsic value comes out to be $46.29, only $1 higher than the current trading price or 2%. Now for cube I will plug in a margin of safety of 18% and as we can see that will give me an acceptable buy price at $37.97. Now as can be seen through the three valuations we did, NSA came out with the highest intrinsic value compared to its current trading price. Nevertheless, they still have a very high payout ratio and therefore I would be more cautious with NSA than any other company we have covered in today's video. Now if you are planning to buy any of these companies, I would highly encourage you to do your own research and base your purchase on your wanted return to risk ratio. With that said, if you want to download these fully automatic spreadsheets for your own personal use, they can be accessed at my Patreon at the link in the description. If you liked the video, make sure to like it and consider subscribing if you want to see more valuations like this.